Knock, knock. Who's there? Gather round. Gather round who? Gather round these nuts. Welcome back to True Footy. G'day guys, welcome back to Just The Tips for round five. Uh, recording this on Sunday night. Again, acknowledging Geelong and Hawthorne have not played yet. Uh, but as I explained in my round review video, which I uploaded yesterday, um, I am flying out to America imminently, well, 24 hours from now, and I'm not going to have time. So um, we're going to crack straight into just the tips. Unfortunately, I won't be able to give you uh, an update on, on who's winning and all that. We'll do that the following week. Today, I'm just going to do a pretty rapid fire edition of just the tips where I, I just go through the games on my phone and literally do the tips right here. So that means no squiggle. I've been relegated from my desk uh, over there because we've set up for Easter. And so I'm just recording recording this in the middle of the night, um, but that's dedication, baby. But it will be an interesting round of footy tipping um, as well, because we have to acknowledge as well, these games are all in Adelaide, so they're all neutral grounds, um, which adds an interesting flavor to this round. Of course, I think there's a couple of home games for the Adelaide teams, and uh, some of these games will be out in like um, non-AFL, uh, traditionally non-AFL grounds as well. So it'll be some interesting uh, variables as well. Now let's crack into it. As always, guys, we'll shout out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com, for all your male grooming needs, whether it be whether it be shaving your chest and, and whatever else. Uh, you've got the Law More 4.0, which would be certainly the best uh, body shaver that I've ever used. I'm a manscaper myself, about to head on holiday as well, so I am... I'm like a baby down there in in hair, not in not in size. But Manscaped.com has everything you need for your male grooming needs. Uh, they've got uh, all these kind of liquid formulations as well, ball deodorant, spool moisturizers, a crop reviver for your your dead nuts. They've even got some Manscaped boxes, uh, so go check it out. And cologne as well. The cologne's actually really nice. You get 20% off and free shipping by using my code TrueFooty20 at checkout. Let's get into the tips. And I mean the actual tips. Yeah, you get what I mean. So the first game of the round is Adelaide versus Carlton at uh, Adelaide Oval. I do need to check the uh, the venues of all of these games, but this is a true home game for the Crows. And what a cracking game to start this round. I'm particularly excited for this contest. Uh, I will be in America, which means I have to get up at six, but I am committing to doing that while I'm away. Uh, but Adelaide coming off a very com compelling win against Fremantle, where their, their small forwards again continue to shine. They've got a very dangerous forward line that I keep talking about um, and a very competent midfield who very, very eye-catching on the run and spread, and that was ultimately what undid Fremantle last week. And uh, as I said in my review video, I think it was the most complete performance we've seen from Adelaide in a while, and that's a huge step, and I give them a red-hot crack against Carlton. Carlton overcame North Melbourne in a good, good Friday game. Good, good Friday game. Ultimately getting the job done by four goals in the end, and it was largely off the back of uh, not only their midfield, but in particular their tools as well with Mackay and Kerno continuing to be the difference between teams in close games. Um, Mackay had four goals, 14 marks. He was really, really prominent in the air and uh, really allowed Carlton to move the ball up the field um, by taking some contested grabs. And of course, Kerno kicked six goals, admittedly against an undermanned North Melbourne backline. But again, I don't need to sell you on Mackay and Kerno, do I? They're back-to-back common medalists. So this game is really interesting. If Adelaide continue their form trajectory, they're a red-hot chance. And I'm very tempted to tip them in this game. But they're coming up against the Carlton side, who I think at the moment, it has to be said, is considerably better than Fremantle. Um, Fremantle's midfield is good, but their run and spread and their, um, ultimately their ability to generate inside 50s and score from them held them back in this game. And I don't think Carlton will have those same issues. And uh, I think Adelaide's, Adelaide's defender, Nick Murray, actually did impress me last week. I thought he played a pretty good game of footy. Um, but will he and Butts be able to cope with uh, Mackay and Kerno? I think that will be the difference again. So I'm going to tip the Blues to win this. Uh, I'll get it up on here. It will give me a margin as well. I'll say they win a close game by 17 points, but I'm not confident about this. Adelaide have impressed me. Then we've got Fremantle versus the Gold Coast Suns at Norwood Oval. And um, yeah, another tough one. I don't really know what to make about this. Two sides kind of struggling at the moment. Fremantle, as I just talked about, got undone by Adelaide, um, you know, in a game where the run and spread was far superior from Adelaide, beat them on the outside. And then a far more potent uh, forward line was ultimately the difference in getting the margin out to 39 points at the end. Fremantle have issues scoring. Um, and on the outside as well, their midfield mix doesn't look great. They're struggling, and this is not an absolute lock away win, which I'm sure their fans are very, very aware of at the moment. And Gold Coast have issues of their own. I think we, we're seeing a distinct lack of progress um, so far this year. It is only early, but um, pretty underwhelming start to the season, getting undone, well, belted actually by the Saints by 53 points last week. And while their midfield is strong, I think it'll be an interesting midfield battle on the inside with um, Fremantle's inside mids like Brayshaw, Sarong and O'Meara winning clearances, Raul, Anderson 
and Miller, very, very good inside midfield. Fremantle, I think, with their smalls, have the capacity to uh, get away from Gold Coast in this game, and they are a better team, but this is not a foregone conclusion. This might be the game Gold Coast sort of break away and show us that potential. I've got a feeling Gold Coast win this game, but I think I'm going to go with a conservative tip, and I'll tip Fremantle to win this, but I think it won't be a foregone conclusion. I think this will be a battle. And I'll say Fremantle win by 15 points. Then we've got Richmond versus Sydney. Another great clash. We've been blessed to see a number of good clashes uh, so far across the five rounds. But this one I'm really excited about. Where is it? We are seeing this game at Adelaide Oval. Richmond weren't consistent enough against the Western Bulldogs. Um, only kicked eight of their 12 goals in one quarter. Um, and, and weren't quite there to compete in the wet weather and to the same extent the Bulldogs were which ultimately cost them the game last week and Sydney coming off a loss against Port Adelaide um, where it's it's hard to fathom how they exactly lost that game considering the the quality of the Sydney Swans lineup they lost two in a row now prior to this week you know I would have had Sydney comfortably better than Richmond they, they probably still are but I think this game will be an interesting intersection of the two sides considering the form line. So considering as well this is a neutral ground, uh, Richmond don't really have too many issues at Adelaide Oval from memory. They've, I think it's been of a bit of a mixed bag there, to be honest. I feel like Sydney is also one of these you know, anywhere, anytime teams. And I think their record in Adelaide is pretty good as well. So I'm really going to just try and tip this game based on how strong I think these two sides are. And while I expect both sides to play in finals, and despite Sydney's poor form the last couple of weeks, getting uh, smashed by Melbourne and then losing it home to Port. I think they're the better side, and therefore I will tip them in this game. It's certainly not a foregone conclusion. I'm probably about 60% confident, maybe 55% confident, but I think Sydney are the better side, and I think I'm going to tip them on that basis. Richmond haven't wowed me yet. They've just been about as good as you expect, and I think Sydney have a bit more capability. So Sydney win this game by four goals. Then we've got the Brisbane Lions and North Melbourne up at the... Uh, no, I was going to assume it was the Gabba. Is it Adelaide Hills, wherever the hell that is? Um, yeah, so Brisbane, you know, got this season back on track with a uh, another good performance against Collingwood. Uh, first time to beat them this year. And their two wins at home have been great, where they've beaten Melbourne, they've beaten Collingwood. So we know that, you know, the, the capacity for, of Brisbane is still there. Like, their ability to win games, I've got to stop saying capacity. Somebody picked me up for that. But their top-level brand of football has been very good. We just haven't seen it away from the Gabba yet yet this year and we know that North Melbourne are a plucky side this will certainly not be an easy game I think it would be much easier to tip if it was the Gabba uh, because Brisbane's form line there has been so strong so that's that's a bit of a variable here North Melbourne uh, I think took it up to Carlton for for most of the game although you have to concede that Carlton are just a better side and uh, the margin margin got out to 48 points in that last quarter before they pegged it back to four goals I don't know anything about this venue in terms of dimensions and and who that's likely to suit but I think based on Brisbane's really convincing performance against Collingwood and uh, and even Melbourne before that. And then you also factor in the dogs lost. The dogs are looking a little bit better as well. I think I'm going to go conservatively here. And I, I, Brisbane should win this game. It would be a big boil over if North win this and be quite concerning for Brisbane in terms of their up and down uh, form if they did drop this game. So I think Brisbane win this game and I'll tip them by a healthy six goals. Then at Adelaide Oval, we've got Essendon versus Melbourne. Um, this will be an interesting game. Essendon uh, done most things right this year. They've beaten the two expansion sides. They beat Hawthorne, the games you'd expect them to win. Uh, they lost to St Kilda by three or four goals as well. And St Kilda are looking like one of the strongest sides in the competition, perhaps at least, you know, I think I ranked them top five in my power rankings. So Essendon are kind of just motoring along at a good level of, um, of development and improvement at least from last year. They come up against one of the strongest sides in the competition, probably the best team in the competition right now, or at least up there with Collingwood. I did just see them in person. I literally just got back from the Eagles game like a couple of hours ago, and I think Melbourne's ability to move the ball quickly and, and it precisely as well is so damaging. And I don't know if Essendon have enough to keep up with Melbourne here. Melbourne's one loss this year was against the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba in a game where the Lions played really well, and I don't think Essendon have that same capability as well. I do feel like as well Melbourne play the Adelaide Oval pretty well, like there's uh, no concerns for them there. I'd be shocked if they lose this. This would be a big boil over. With all due respect to Essendon, Melbourne are one of the best sides in the competition. They should win this game. It could be as much as 40 points. I'll say Melbourne by 40. Then you have one of the more interesting clashes of this round, again at Adelaide Oval. Port Adelaide hosting the Western Bulldogs, two sides trying to keep their season alive. Both teams that I thought should be in the mix for finals, 
poor start to the year, or at least up and down start to the year. Two wins and two losses. Two wins where they look good, two losses where they look poor. Uh, this is an interesting intersection of these two sides meeting, and I'm really excited for it. Port Adelaide coming off a heroic win against the Swans in Sydney, which is no easy feat, um, and deserve credit for that after being criticised for two weeks uh, of two relatively poor, well, quite poor performances against Collingwood, and then against their arch rivals in Adelaide, who have put together some reasonable form too. The Dogs, on the other hand, uh, have just beaten Richmond in a quite an impressive performance, and we're starting to see that ability uh, that we, we come to expect from them in recent years. Uh, they've put it together two weeks in a row following their big win over Brisbane, uh, big as in meaningful not uh, not the margin. This is a tough one because I am I feel more convinced that we'll see the good version of the Bulldogs rock up to this game than I am convinced that there will be the good version of Port Adelaide come to this game. The Bulldogs again, you know, fairly decent at Adelaide Oval. I think of the 2021 prelim where they annihilated Port at Adelaide Oval, and you know that was a long time ago. But they obviously don't have any fears about this ground, and this is a big game. It's a big game. It's almost like a mini final in round five, if you if you believe it. I think if Port, if both sides bring their A game, I think Port win this narrowly at home. But I'm a little bit more convinced that the Bulldogs will show up to this game, and therefore I'm tipping a big game from the senior leaders at, at the Dogs. You know, Bont, McRae, Caleb Daniel. I think both sides have a lot in the locker room. I'm just a little bit more convinced that the Dogs will win this game, and therefore I'll tip them by 13 points. But it is pretty 50-50, and probably one of the most watchable games as a neutral this round. Oh, hang on. I thought that would be match of the round. Geelong versus West Coast at Adelaide Oval might just take the cake. Uh, two sides who are in the bottom, you know, regions of the ladder. As, as I record this, the Cats are still 0-3. I do expect them to win tomorrow. And perhaps if they lost to Hawthorne, this would change uh, how I view this upcoming game against the Eagles. But the, the Cats have obviously been off the boil, haven't played some great footy this year. And I still think they're just building up to... Um, the, the form later in the season. I don't think they plan to be 0-3 and three at this point, but I think they'll be relatively relaxed knowing that uh, their best is yet to come. And uh, what a better way to kick it off than against West Coast, who notoriously love playing Geelong into form. I think back to, I think it was 2021, uh, the Cats had started the year very averagely, not quite as averagely as now. The Eagles had been better on form going into a round five or six or seven clash, I can't remember. And we lost that game by 100 points. So even though the fact that this is not a GMHBA, putting form aside, don't even care about form, the Cats will win this game comfortably. For the Eagles, I think we've, we're have we on a pretty positive trend. I think we've been forced into playing some kids and pleasingly against Melbourne, I think we've seen that the effort and intensity hasn't gone, the, the willingness to try and play the game plan. But how is uh, an, one single Tom Barras as a key defender assuming we don't get Harry Edwards back in or whatever, going to cope with Tom Hawkins and Jeremy Cameron as well. And that's just pl- focusing on one position. I think Geelong have way too much in the locker room. This will be a smashing, I think. And I'm, I'm hoping we see an Eagles side that is competitive again. But 50 points, Geelong lock it in. The penultimate game of Gather Round is is a tricky one, actually. GWS playing Hawthorne at Norwood Oval. Um, two sides again probably currently in the nether regions of the ladder and both played with some degree of mixed bag of form Marie. The Giants were gallant in their defeat against Essendon and uh, to be honest I don't think there's been one single really poor GWS performance this year. They've lost to the Eagles, uh, they beat the Crows in a really tough win, they lost to a good side in Carlton by 10 points at home uh, and now they play Hawthorne who conversely has been far more up and down so they got annihilated by Sydney, they got annihilated by Essendon in round one and then and came out and beat North Melbourne in round three. On the mean average of how these teams have gone, GWS is probably the favoured team here. And uh, I think the tipsters have it. 85% of people are tipping GWS for this game. I don't think it's that um, that clear whatsoever. I do think GWS, you know, they've got they've certainly got more experience and probably some more top-end power. But we know that these Hawthorne, Hawthorne sides tends to click when it wants to sometimes, and it did that against North Melbourne, and we saw a really good brand of footy. I'm equally not super convinced that GWS would be able to cope with a Hawthorne side that does click, but I think I'm going to bitch out here, and I think I'm going to tip the side that on paper should be better. GWS arguably are underperforming, considering you know the strength of that midfield, Tom Green, Whitfield, Stephen Cornelio is playing well. They're actually playing well, but they're not getting results. This might be the game that they finally break the damn wall, so to speak, and, um, and get the win. And I think they'll view this, both sides will view this as a very winnable game. I think the Giants get the job done here. I'm going to tip conservatively, but I could see a five-goal Hawthorne win coming up as well. These are the sorts of tips that will be relatively 50-50 where the best tippers get ahead. And that's why I'm tempted to tip the Hawks. 
but I'm going to say the Giants. The Giants should win. But Hawthorne will make me look silly. Giants by 18. Then we have another big game at Adelaide Oval to close out the round. Collingwood versus St Kilda. This is the top of the table clash uh, by comparison. Um, St Kilda obviously undefeated. Four and zip. 160%. Just smashed the Gold Coast. And uh, haven't put a foot wrong. Um, as much as the opponents haven't been massively strong so far. They've looked convincing while they've done it. And looking dangerous with their run and carry. Um, and their, their small's ability to impact the game as well with Higgins and Gresham. Dan Butler as well kicked a bag of four last week. This will be their biggest test of the year, and this is why this game will be very, very interesting for me. Collingwood, obviously by comparison, really great start to the year. Tough opponent uh, in the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba, and I think the Lions at the Gabba is is a tough trip in footy, it has to, it has to be said. Their performances this year have been really strong. They've beaten Melbourne, they've beaten Collingwood, so there's nothing to sneeze at. Obviously, there's a bit of a ruck issue at Collingwood at the moment, but ultimately, I expect them to shrug that loss off, and they'll take some good form into this game, I suspect. So I'm not actually sure at this point whether Darcy Cameron's going to be a available for selection. I think it was a short-term injury, so there's a chance he's in, which will help because St Kilda's Rowan Marshall is uh, not the sort of ruckman you want to go in with no recognized ruck. So if the Pies find a way to sort of nullify that advantage um, and the Saints have some good clearance midfielders, if the Pies find a way to shark the taps, that they should be a better side. So I'm going to tip Collingwood here, but it's not a foregone conclusion. If St Kilda win this, this is where you put them in, you know, probably a top four and beyond contender. But we're yet to see it, and that's why I'm not going to tip them. And I don't think that's too disrespectful, as I think Collingwood are the form side of the competition before last week, and ultimately be one of the last teams to get eliminated this year. So Collingwood win this just by being a better side. I think they'll win this game by four goals, but this will be tasty. So there you have it, guys. That is my tips for round five. And uh, that concludes the last video I'll do in Australia for a while. Um, so thank you very much for joining me on the journey. Hope you are subscribed. Hope you are going to take part in the channel going forward. Um, the next month of videos will be in America. Then I'm off to the UK and then Greece for a bit. I'll figure out how to make content uh, while I'm traveling. I'm, uh, it's, I've got to. It's my job now. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you sticking through for the videos. And um, yeah, I'll see you on the other side. I'll see you in America, guys. Enjoy your week. And I'll see you on the other side of a 30-hour journey to America. Peace out.